Dynamically posing an object using rigging can be a really powerful tool to utilize while sculpting. Posing multiple meshes while still maintaining symmetrical sculpting has been a real time saver while working on these beastmen lately. So let's get stuck in to looking at how this works. We'll use this example torso to go over the very basics of rigging. Hit Shift A to add an armature. It will be added to the position of the 3D cursor. In my case, it's been created inside of the chest object. First of all, we will want to bring the armature to the front so it's always visible. Go to Object Properties, Viewport Display, then check In Front. Now the armature will be visible in front of our object. We are in Object Mode currently, but the armature object has two others, Edit and Pose Mode. Hit Tab to enter Edit Mode. Snapping the view on the viewport to the front and side really helps accurately position these bones. For me, it is the apostrophe key, but on your keyboard it may be the numpad. Snap to the front view and select the bone. Hit G, then Z to move this down the torso. Then hit S to scale it up. We want this one to be about the height of the hips. Snap to the left or right now to then click the top of the bone. Hit E to extrude a few new ones. This will be our spine. Four should be a good amount for the spine. Hit tab to get back into object mode, then click the torso and then shift click the armature. Hit Ctrl P and select the armature deform with auto weights. This will set up our torso object to move with the armature. Select the armature and use Ctrl tab to enter pose mode. Now, when selecting bones and hitting R, you can rotate each one and twist the mesh into a new pose. Hitting Ctrl tab again, we can start to see the power of this approach. If we select the torso and hit Alt D to make a link duplicate, go to Modifier Properties and remove the armature modifier. Enter Sculpt Mode to see how we can continue refining the shape while it is posed. Something to keep in mind is remeshing will destroy our relationship with the armature and we will need to select both objects and parent with automatic weights again if a remesh is required. Sometimes we will want to pose something a little more complicated. Take this head. We may want to place bones and mirror them onto the other side. You don't always need to extrude from other bones. You can hit Shift A while in edit mode to create a new bone from the origin, then position and scale it. Once we have a few in place, we will need to name the ones we want to mirror in a special way. Select each bone and hit F2 to rename. You need to include the letter L or R in the name. Then hit A to select all the bones, right click and select Symmetrize. If nothing happens, it may be because the mesh is not perfectly symmetrical. To correct this, enter Sculpt Mode on the head and Symmetrize it over the X axis. Using my Sculpt Pies add-on, we can do this really fast. For more info on that, check out the overview video in the description. Now with all the bones named and the head symmetrized, they will be mirrored over successfully. Something else to note about bones is the direction. They always rotate from the base in pose mode. Depending on how you want the rotation to work, you can select bones and flip them easily using Alt F in edit mode. While twisting objects around like the torso, you may want some objects to follow the mesh around in certain areas. If we take an arm and shift click the torso, select parent triangle and the object will follow that area of the mesh. Pretty handy while posing, but beware as this does come at a performance cost while sculpting on the objects, but you can regain it by simply unparenting. Happy with your new pose? First, make the object a single user if you have any link duplicates of this same mesh. Then apply the armature modifier to continue sculpting on from there. It will no longer be connected to the armature. Perhaps you've made a mess. You can easily reset the pose by entering pose mode and hitting Alt R then Alt S to reset the rotation and scale of the bones. Once you get the hang of things, you might find the default look of the bones a little distracting while sculpting. You can alter that in Object Data Properties, Viewport Display, then change the display as dropdown. I like the wire option as it really gets out of the way. You can tweak this further by going to Edit, Preferences, Themes, 3D Viewport, Wire, 
and change the colouring. So far, we've covered rigging using auto weights, which is a bit like magic until you know a little bit about weight painting. The auto weight painting does have its drawbacks. Take this finger. After setting automatic weights, you can see the deform is not very realistic. We can overcome this kind of problem with the basics of weight painting. Select the armature, then shift click the mesh to enter weight paint mode. Now when we control click each bone, we will activate weight painting for each one. Control clicking on the first one reveals these colours painted onto the mesh. Cooler colours represent the bone having little influence over that area of the mesh, and warmer ones mean more. Blue is none and red is most. Select the draw brush and turn on symmetry in the corner. If you notice symmetry isn't working, then you will need to symmetrize the mesh as it needs to be perfectly mirrored just like when mirroring bones before. Now you can paint on the mesh with the colour selected in the weight slider. With the bottom bone selected, we will want this red while the rest should be blue. While each bone is selected, you can hit R to test out how your weight painting is affecting the bend. Once everything is painted, you will notice a much cleaner bend. Of course, you could spend a lot more time with weight painting, but this will be good enough for us to get a hand base mesh together and sculpt over later. Bringing together everything we have learned, I have created the lovingly named Beastman Rigatron. You can grab him on my gum road and try out some twisting and bending, or perhaps apply the techniques found in this video to the next character you create. Hopefully you can come up with some better poses than the one I just did. Cheers for sticking around to the end of this video, and if you're new to the channel, welcome! If you like to dabble with Blender like me, we have a community discord linked in the description where you can ask questions and share your projects. Also be sure to like the video if you did and subscribe if you want to see more. A big thank you as always to my supporters on Patreon. And if you like free minis and early access to content like this, I might see you there too. See you all in the next video.